Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having us. Um, first thing to say is that uh, this was originally supposed to be given by Thomas Atkinson from Hoffman Green. Uh, so you should have a suave and sophisticated Frenchman standing here delivering this to you. But unfortunately, he couldn't make it for various travel reasons. So you've got me instead. Um, thank you very much. Rather than butcher his presentation, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Hoffman, play you a video uh, that hopefully gives you a bit more information, then move on to Semblend and the UK side of what we're trying to do here. Um, Hoffman was started in 2014, founded in 2014, so they've been developing novel cements for over a decade. They've, um, they've gone through 10 years of R&D of testing. They've raised 130 million euros through IPO. They've built 300,000 tonne of production capacity. So these, whilst this is all about the future, these are real materials, real products that we can actually buy and use um, and implement into the UK today. So that tower that you've seen there was built using 100% of the, um, the HUKR product, 70 metre tall slip form tower. Um, so in terms of does the product work, I think the answer is clearly yes from that demonstration alone. And they have four main technologies that they've developed. Uh, there's two that, that we're focusing on, which is the HEVA and the HUKR. Uh, they seem to be the two that replicate cement characteristics and performance um, as well the most closely that we've seen and we seem to be having the most traction with here in the UK. Uh, the HEVA is calcine clay based, it's, it's activated and the HEKR is GGBS based, it's traditional alkali activated cement. So in terms of usability and production, the processes are the same. The, um, the handling is the same, you don't need different equipment, you can use it in a normal ready mix plant, delivered through a normal you know, concrete mixer, uh, don't really need to change anything in order to actually use these products today, but I'll give you a little bit more insight into both of those later when I do my actual presentation. Um, the only other thing from Hoffman that we really wanted to put up here is just to say, this, for people that know what this term means, it's at a technology readiness level nine, it is an actual system, it is proven, it is fully certified by the CSTB in France. Um, it's going through the motions with um, BRE in the UK. Uh, it's currently being used under the Flex 350 standard, which replaced PAS 8820. So whilst they may be a bit futuristic and maybe people aren't talking about them and using 
them as much as they could be, it is actually here and live and, and ready to go. So Thomas can do like an hour talking about this. Uh, if anybody does want to hear that, he has volunteered to jump on video calls or come over. Um, so just come and see us afterwards and we can set that up if anyone is interested. But in terms of me, the future for the UK, um, so I'm from a company called Semblend. We're relatively new, um, started in 2020. We've got a blending facility and six import terminals. And we really focus on uh, low carbon blends and innovation in the sector. And that's traditionally client led. Um, we're not necessarily a bunch of chemists. We're not PhD students, or we're not students. We, we don't necessarily do a huge amount of research, but we do work with partners throughout industry. So if, for example, graphene, we've worked with graphene in the past and we know it works really well with these polymers. It loves geopolymer, has some great benefits. Um, and we signed a, an exclusive distribution contract with Hoffman Green in 2022 so that we can bring those products into the UK for, without having to go through all of the um, rigmarole effort, whatever you want to call it, to develop new products, get them into the market, get them certified and get them used. So as I said, we've got six terminals. They're geographically spread across the UK and our blending plant is nicely situated in the middle of the country. So we've got a full geographical reach. Um, we've sent blended materials down to Cornwall, to the Isle of Wight, up to Scottish islands um, off the Highland coastline. So wherever there's a need, wherever, wherever we're engaged by clients to help deliver solutions, then we can do that anywhere. And it might just be one load out of a, a thousand ton job, just one trial, one section, of a pavement with graphene blended into it, as an example. Um, so we can really get to anywhere through the footprint that we've got. Specifically on the Hoffman products, uh, we keep a stock in the UK. We keep um, 25 kg bags and bulk bags at our Runcorn depot, and we keep bulk products at our Rusley plant. So realistically within 24 hours of receiving an order we can deliver these products to site if it isn't something in stock or it's a bigger requirement and we have to bring it straight over from france then generally speaking three or four days maybe a week but we can we can get the product in bulk to sites in the uk at a short notice we do often get questioned on the on the co2 impact um what the, what Thomas's presentation didn't show, because we took a lot of the slides out, was that the HUKR has an embodied CO2 leaving the factory in France of 188 kilograms per tonne, and the HEVA of 272. So compared to traditional cements, they're you know, significantly lower, a fifth to a quarter of the embodied carbon. The extra haulage, um, we did a we did a study for a client um, tendering for a job in London, and we had to calculate it. It added 41 kgs to haul the products from the factory in France up to our Runcorn depot, handle it and send it back down to London. So, you know, it, in terms of that project then had uh, like 230 kgs per tonne delivered against the equivalent SEM1 of probably 850 as a delivered uh, value. So even with the extra logistics, still has a massively beneficial um, reduction in the CO2. And the way that we can reduce that even further, and we could probably knock another 30 kgs out, is to produce it in the UK ourselves. Hopefully next year we can have another slot and we can tell you all about the new facility that we've built um, in the UK, which hopefully is, is going to be coming online next year. Best way to tell everybody how it works is to show you how it's been used and what people are doing with it. So. Uh, here's one case study, a uh, client was Hemspan, it was a development in Borough Green in Cambridgeshire and we used HUKR to do the, um, the slabs for these uh, passive houses. The client's logic was why would, you, why would you invest in a novel production house, it had hemp insulation and various other sort of new and innovative characteristics to then put it on a concrete base. 
So they were fully supportive of using the HUKR. We worked really closely with them to go through the insurance. We worked with the insurance companies. Um, we worked with building control, um, used the, the, the PAS 8820 as it was, um, and managed to get everybody on board so that we could actually deliver the project. Uh, it was five plots, each insulated rafts. Each one had an average of 55 meters in, in it. The biggest challenge really was with the underfloor heating guys, so there was a lot of work went in with them about the warranties because they'd never seen or heard of an al alkali activated cement before. But we got through all of that, we just you know, worked very closely with them, we've got really good technical support, Hoffman offer us very good technical support as well. So between us all we were able to get everything approved in order to, to actually do the job. The client was also appreciative of the fact that it was a novel material and they allowed us to effectively play with it. So we delivered them 25 kg bags, they knocked it up by hand, they used a mixer on site, they did their curb backings with it, they did gully surrounds, they were doing sort of, you know, five to one mixes and all the sort of stuff that you would do on site. Um, and it performed exactly as they thought it would, exactly as a traditional cement would, as a traditional concrete. Wood, so then they let us play with a volumetric. So we did the first pour, first 55 meters, pumped three volumetrics. And then for the, the, set, the next two plots, they allowed us to play with um, full ready mix trucks. So used a local concrete production partner who emptied their slag silo for the day. We filled it with HUKR and they poured the 60 odd cube for that day and through a few mixes, all pumped, um, all as a C30. The pump operator, the guys on site, the guys laying it, the ground workers, everybody was just, it was just a normal day. They just, they used the same equipment, they used the same floats, they used the same trowels. There was nothing different, they didn't experience anything different when using this material. And so from that perspective, it was a complete success. They also let us play with the mixed designs on the day so we actually our commitment was we would deliver a, a c30 or above um, we used various different cement contents three different mixes and we got um 28 day cube strengths ranging from 44 newtons up to 53 newtons um, and then they've continued to to develop over 56 and 84 days Again, we've not put it up here, but if anyone wants to see that data, the client's happy for us to share it. So we'll make it available to anybody who wants to, to look at it or, or chat about it. Um, and then probably the most relevant one and the bit that we really wanted to talk about uh, today was um, working with stabilised pavements in, in Norfolk. Um, we used the HEVA, so the calcine clay product to do some in situ stabilisation of a, of a piece of, of highway uh, in Wigan Hall. Um, it was SPL's traditional um, process, so uh, re in situ re recycling of the sub base. Uh, it was done as a trial, so half of the job was done with their traditional SEM2, and then the other half was done using the HEVA and all the other uh, variables remained the same. Um, through that, their normal process, they obviously did um, trial holes, they did coring, they worked with it in the lab for a number of weeks first to make sure it was all going to be suitable. They did their, their usual sort of um, uh, ground penetration surveys to confirm that everything was going to be okay. Uh, and then with the, um, the endorsement and support of of Norse, we agreed to monitor the trial over a period of time. So I know um, Andy from SPL is here and, and Simon from Norse as well. So there's now a year's worth of data on this. So if anybody wants to actually see and talk about the, the results, I'm sure they'll chat to you over lunch. But generally speaking, uh, it was a success. Um, they used the same equipment, nothing changed. The lads on site were the same. They didn't do anything differently. They got the same performance as the SEM2, which we were slightly disappointed by. We wanted it to be better, but 
we were obviously happy with the fact that it was the same. So that case of performance differential completely goes. It can purely come down to, um, to the CO2 saving, which in this example you can see from there, that whilst the SEM2 is obviously incredibly low anyway, or certainly much lower than a SEM1, uh, the HEVA was able to reduce it even further and you know, save sort of seven kgs per tonne in terms of the finished pavement makeup. And rather than me tell you more about it, probably let the guys on site do that. So I'll just play this quick video. We've grown a close relationship with SPL over the past couple of years. Well, I mean, big agenda for obviously all clients these days is to reduce the carbon footprint of everything that we do. And to move away from cement is an opportunity to reduce that footprint even further. We came across Hoffman Green through our relationship with Semblend. On this job particularly, it's the HEVA Sol product that we're using through. HEVA Sol performed sort of in line with SEM2, which is what we would normally use. We've come to the point now where we've done enough in-house testing that we can trial them on site. It performs the same on site as the SEM2 would. If you walked up onto a bay that we've already done today, I would say you can't tell if it's SEM2 or HEVA Sol. So there you have it. I think we were talking this morning that um, actually on a, on a repeat visit recently, uh, the, from a durability perspective, um, the piece of the road done with the HEVA is actually in a better condition now than the, uh, the road that was done with the, with the SEM2. But we've got no data on that yet. Again, maybe Simon can, can share some of that later if required. Um, so really, just to conclude, um, Hoffman Green Cement Technologies, they produce zero clinker low carbon cements. They're available now, they're certified, they're tested, they've had 10 years worth of R&D, it's an ongoing process. They spend more on R&D than anyone in France in terms of their, um, they're the biggest uh, customer for the CITB. So, you know, they're, they're constantly investing in the products and the development of the products. Um, we import those products. We have stock of them in the UK. They are ready to use. They are easy to use. You don't have to change anything else. Uh, everything else can stay the same. Um, and whilst this is all about the future, they are actually immediately available. And you know, we're delivering some on Monday to, a, to another site in Cambridgeshire. So thank you very much for your time. If you need to know any more, then come and grab us and we'll happily chat to you about it. Thank you. <laughs>